Hello VC, happy Easter, Uncle Rodis again with another video of updates, some low, latest vinyl that has arrived in my collection. So, um, playing behind me is Harmonia, German kind of electronic -y. I mean it gets called Kraut Rock, but it's not really rock, <laughs> more ambient than that, but um, I will talk a bit more about that later. Um, so let's kick it off. Uh, recently picked up an album for my missus who had an old Walt Disney album she wanted to play and when I pulled it out, one of her old favourites, and when I pulled it out of its case to have a look at it, it was very, very badly scratched and some pretty major gouges in it, so I'm not sure how she used to listen to it, but anyway, um, I offered to replace it for her and managed to track down a copy from Discogs out of Australia, and while I was on the seller's site, I found this, which has been on my want list for a while, and this is the hometown band out of Canada in 1960. 76, I think this was released. Flying LP. I'm not sure whether they did any other records now. Off the top of my head, I can't quite remember. But this is a, this is a great pop, you know, lovely pop album. Yeah, with um, an extremely good female vocalist by the name. The light's not too good. Sherry Ulich. Or Ulrich, and the, I mean, it's pretty commercial sort of music, but they do stretch out of it on the second side. There's two extended tracks, one extended track, one short, I can't quite remember now, um, where they get a bit more jazzy, progressive. Um, but yeah, I really like this. I really like her voice. I really like this album. It's highly recommended. Hometown band. Then I have been purchasing some of these. Now these are fairly new out uh, off Soul Jazz Records, who they do a lot of compilation stuff, um, archive, archival stuff. So this is a punk, as you see, punk 45. Kill the hippies, kill yourself. The American nation destroys its young. Underground punk in the United States of America. This is volume one. Great set of liner notes um, talking about the history of the movement of the themes um, and the bands themselves, as you can see in there. Um, familiar with some, not familiar with others. Pierre Ubu, The Modern Dance, is a, is a pretty well known classic. And Johnny Thunders and The Heartbreaker. The Lewd I knew from prob probably one of the greatest punk compilations I've ever seen and don't have a copy of at the moment but that was a bootleg compilation called Feel Lucky Punk which is just out of this world um, really just beautifully raw thrashy but early you know before it went hardcore like the, before the English hardcore of the early 80s and the American hardcore of the early 80s it was the original kind of late 70s rocking punk which is what a lot of this is and also a little bit of earlier stuff like the electric eels agitated um, Hollywood squares and normals and zeros tuxedo moon which I'll talk more about soon which is uh, a very early single of theirs um, they formed in the 1977 the flaming groovies which I think were a little bit earlier um, yeah bloody awesome very good compilation and I am very impressed and sticking with the same type of thing I don't have volume 2 just yet but I have volume 3 this here is after the love and before the revolution so proto punk 1969 to 76 so this is some of the stuff that influenced the early the first wave of punk Again, lots of liner notes in the centre talking about the earlier bands, and then there's an insert here in, in, uh, talking about the bands themselves and a bit of the history. 
So I, I mean the, the the reading it's really cool, really good reading. And there's some oh there's some great stuff on here. Some some of it again is new to me. There's uh, so I one has a track by a guy called George Brigman, Jungle Rot, which is just excellent, excellent rocking. Uh, and Death has a really good song they put out. They put out a 45 and then kind of flitted away and then I think there was an album put together much, much later that compiled most of the stuff that they'd recorded, um, which I think I've seen floating around in the internet. Has, has, has Crime with their Hot Wire to My Heart, Hot Wire My Heart, which you will know, a lot of us will know from Sonic Youth who did a cover of that, which and that is a fantastic song. Hollywood Brats, Cabaret Voltaire, interesting to see them on here, um, Electric Eels again, the Count Bishops, who were one of the early, one of the, the pub rock bands that kind of were around just before the punk movement started, the 101ers, Keys to Your Heart, which is well, for me a well-known song, which was Joe Strummer's first band back in the um, late 70s before he joined The Clash, and... Yeah, I'm not sure where the rest of them don't really ring any bells, but again, great compilation, really, really good to have. And then the last of these so far that I have picked up is this one here. I'm not sure what volume this is, but this is the latest one out, I think. Um, so it could be volume six because there are six releases in this series at present. Um, two, three of which I still yet to get. So this one here, again, covers the LA scene uh, Hollywood from X to Zero and Hardcore on the Beaches, Punk in Los Angeles 77 to 81. So it covers the first wave of the punk bands and then some of the later ones that started. Um, I guess, what is it? The first ones were in the central LA area and then the later ones were more out in the suburbs, which was the hardcore stuff. So there was, there was talk of Black Flag. Um, and some of those sort of bands as they got a bit more harder um, and the scene fragmented a wee bit. But it was quite interesting reading. Um, there's a little booklet in this one with uh, bios on the bands and the inserts. The album sleeves have more copious amounts of notes talking about the LA scene and it was very interesting. Such a tiny scene in, in you know 1977 to sort of 79. So really only a couple of years, or well, maybe 76 started kicking off. Just a couple of years of it, um, and yet you know it, it, it went out into the world, and now we have this you know in my hands in the little country New Zealand. But you know back in the day when these bands were playing, you know. Um, X, who, who, we, who a lot of us will know, The Germs, who, who went on, um, Pat Smear went on to bigger things, um, and Darby Crash was their lead singer who, who uh, committed suicide not long after these recordings. Um, the Adolescents, The Dills, The Circle Jerks, so there are a lot of bands that went on and did a lot more, TSOL, but there are a lot here that were only there for the urinals, we were there for a short time, The Weirdos, Flesh Eaters, The Middle Class, Agent Orange, Some of the, a lot of those I haven't really heard of, The Zeros I have, but um, this, this is my favourite of the compilations because the LA scene was pretty impressive, but like I say, it was such a tiny scene, just half a dozen odd bands playing and living in the same places in the same area, playing in the same venues, um, probably playing to three or four hundred people at the most that, that knew of the scene, uh, releasing singles, in, in tiny amounts that are pretty hard to come by now so this is probably one of the few ways you're going to actually get your hands on that kind of music because who can afford to buy those singles if you can find them um, apparently also in the germs very first incarnation before they even recorded anything was a lady called belinda carlisle is it carlisle something like that who I think many of you know went on to become quite famous. Um, but yeah, many of them did. X, X was an awesome band. They're one of my favourites from the Hollywood scene. Um, and they went on to do quite a lot of records, many of which I have on CD. Anyway, moving along. <sighs> Reasons Why I Am Broke, Part 1. Miles Davis. So this is a completely different type of music, obviously, from one extreme to the other. So Miles at Newport, the bootleg series, this is the fourth volume from 1955 to 75. 
Uh, there is eight albums in here um, covering from his very earliest, as I say, his first appearance in 1955 right through to 1975, so 20 years. And it's a great portrait of his evolution of his music from, you know, the, the very the straight up earlier jazz and the, what do they call it, the West Coast cool jazz that he was playing first up in the early days and then through his um, more, well, got a little bit more um, avant-garde again and, and a bit more bebop later on um, in the 60s in, by the sound of what I've heard so far. And then of course we know he moved on to his fusion stuff later on. So um, this is a really cool box set uh, on music on vinyl, is it? They, uh, music on vinyl is the, is the, is the re label released this through um, for, for um, Columbia Legacy. So there's a little booklet that comes with it. Of course, this is the bonus of having it on LP as opposed to CD. I get this nice big book, which is a little bit easier to read, and has a little bit of a write-up on each of the years that he played there with some photos. And then each of the albums comes in its own sleeve with track listing on one side, like so, and then just photos, mostly audience, some band photos. Um, yeah, mostly, mostly pictures. Yeah, just of random things and, and pictures of the audience. So, so cool photos though. So that's um, that's one reason why I am at home for Easter and not going away somewhere. And then reason number two that I am stuck at home over Easter is another hefty box set. So this is Tuxedo Moon. This is from 2015, last year. Uh, crammed Discs um, put this out. So they did a few records on Crammed originally in the old days. Um, so we get a nice booklet with this again, as you would expect for a hefty um, box set. So there's a pretty much like we've got lyrics for each of the records and some photographs etc um, and, and other information on the records who played on them and when they were produced and then we have some recollections of the band members at the start of the book so that's all quite cool interesting read it because to be honest this band I wasn't hugely um, familiar with but I knew of them and I had a couple of tracks on the Cran disc compilation that I had have on CD so there's nine albums and a compilation album in the set so ten pieces of vinyl all up so this is the compilation uh, anthology of recovered nuggets from the vaults um, from 19 very early from 1978 uh, oh, 1977 actually was the first one. A cover of I've Heard It Through the Grapevine by the looks of it. And there's a, yeah, there's a few tracks here on. I haven't listened to this particular album yet. Um, yeah. No, no, none of the songs, not, not the song that was on that punk compilation isn't on here either. And also the very first single which I remember hearing on one of the Mutant Sound blog shows is not on here either. So, um, so in kind of an order here, backwards is uh, Vapor Trails from 2007, uh, Bardo Hotel soundtrack from 2006, Kevin in the Sky from 2004, which kind of is when they started reissuing, re-releasing -re new stuff after a considerable break, um, the Ghost Sonata. Um, actually has two dates, 91 and 97, so I'm not quite sure what that's about. I haven't actually listened to that one yet, but I have listened to these earlier ones. So we're going back to 1987 with You, Ship of Fools, uh, 1986, Holy Wars, 1985, Desire from 1981, so it's a bit of a gap there, and I think that there were some other records released. This isn't a comprehensive um, reissue box either. It's, there is, there are, I think there were some live records and some other bits and pieces, but 
we have, what was this one called? Oh, Half Mute, which is their uh, debut from 1980. And yeah, this is I, I, these, this is a fantastic band. I really, really am enjoying their music um, to the maximum. It's kind of pretty hard to describe and a little bit offbeat, but very high quality and great to have it. So it was interesting. I got this through Amazon, and when I brought it off their site, I buy from the UK site because of the postage. The postage from the States is just too prohibitive now. And it was interesting because their postage is set and it didn't change. It was the same postage I would paid for a single album buying a box set. So I think my postage to get this 10 LP, which is pretty heavy, box set was about $3, £3.58, which is about $8 to $9 New Zealand. So. Um, there was a score, and the other thing was it was listed on Amazon for like a hundred pound. Um, now that's something like over two hundred, two hundred and nearly two hundred and fifty dollars New Zealand. I actually got it for just on two, just over two hundred because as it went through the process of putting it in my basket and putting it out, the price dropped from dropped from a hundred pound, one hundred and one or one hundred and two pound to eighty five pound or eighty nine pounds. So I'm not sure why it did that. But I wasn't going to complain about it, so I picked it up reasonably well. Now the other one, which is playing in the background, this is Harmonia. This is their box set of pretty much everything that they ever recorded and released, from what I understand. Um, which you can see on the side of the box there. So there are one, two, three, four, five records in here, one being a double, so there's six pieces of vinyl. Um, sort of paid about the same price as I did for the Tuxedo Moon, so that was probably better value. Um, and but again, I got the same postage, so I saved big time on the postage. And that's actually not glued on there very well, so I have to watch that. So Harmonia were a <laughs> they use, they've used the word kraut rock, but as I said before, I think it's you know, they're a bit more ambient and experimental. Although crap rock was pretty experimental in places. Well, crap rock covers a pretty wide range of music, to be honest. It's pretty generic. Um, if you hear in the background, though, it's sort of, it, there's a lot of craft work kind of involved in this if you really listen to this. So, I mean, a bit like that. But again, it's got a booklet somewhere here. Um, there's a booklet. Again, it's got some history of the band uh, and then a bunch of photos, basically. Um, so that's cool. And then it's got a poster and it's got another little pop-up thing which I can't be bothered grabbing. But anyway, first album, This is they, did, they only actually recorded two albums first up as the band. The, the rest of these albums, apart from this one here from 1976, uh, the band had actually already split but Brian Eno, Brian Eno loved them so much and you can certainly uh, hear in this band the influence they had on Eno's ambient stuff later on. He, he ranted and raved about how great the, this band was and so he really wanted to work with them and he, matched, he got them back together for that in 1976. But this is their debut album. This is a fantastic record. This is the best album. I mean, this is the one that I've seen flashed around um, on videos and on um, yeah, Facebook. So it's, it's got the Brain symbol. They were originally released on, released on, released on Brain Record, which is a great label some great music. Um, this is, you know, these pieces are a little bit like what we're hearing in the background. They're quite mellow. Take a lot of attention listening to them to really get what's going on in them. The next album they released was Deluxe from 1975. Uh, again, on Brain, you can see the little Brain symbol on the bottom there. Uh, this album, some of it has is a little bit more rock orientated. It actually has a bit more of a beat to it. It's actually got vocals on it. Um, there's an interesting track, Monza on side two, which is a seven minute piece, I think that's the track I was listening to, and it's very interesting, there is a very close similarity of that track to what something that Bowie did on, I think, possibly his low album, and of course Brian Eno produced that with David Bowie, so that's kind of suspicious a little bit, this was of course a bit earlier on. So we've got that one, and then we've got... Some documents here from 1975. There's four tracks from 1975, um, which 
No, it's not the one that's playing in the background. I'm not sure. I haven't actually had a look at what this album is. I haven't read the notes. I have listened to it. Um, and it's similar to the live one. So whether they're live tracks or or some other stuff, recordings that were never released, um, I'm not sure. And then, finally, where's the cover gone? This one that's playing in the background is this one here. Uh, live in 1974, again this went unreleased for many years, it was released in 1977 um, and there's pretty much two tracks on each side, oh sorry, three, two tracks on the first side they're quite extended and then uh, three tracks on the other one again quite long, one of them's 15 minutes, the same one of them's 17 minutes, so they just kind of, you know, pottering along as you can hear in the background. Um, again the music needs quite a bit of attention, you know, good to probably put the headphones on actually and just listen to it and listen to what's developing in that. So um, so I wasn't, like I say again, I wasn't hugely familiar with their music but I'd heard some bits of this and seen it around and I liked they, the, the band, the three people, two of them were from originally from Cluster, which is another crap rock band from the early 70s who I have heard some stuff of which I really liked and, I, and the other guy is Michael Rother, that's his name, from New, N-E-U, yeah Michael Rother, He's for, he was from New, he's a guitar man and he, I, I mean I knew them too, I've got two or, the, two or three of those, they're, they're, um, well they only had about three albums which I've got on CD. So. Box sets galore, I absolutely love these box sets, they're fantastic, um, yeah, they are very pricey and although the Tuxedo Moon one probably worked out at ooh, 20 bucks an album, um, the Harmonia one worked out about 30 bucks an album and the other one worked out a bit less. Anyway, that's me all done, thank you very much and we'll see you again next time.